Don't hold back. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of making mistakes because that's all a part of, that's the whole part of learning about yourself. Because I've seen so many people in the past who would say to me, I don't want to buy such and such, or I don't want to do because I'm afraid I'll make a mistake. Well, that's the whole point. It's the Inspiration Place podcast with artist Miriam Shulman. Welcome to the Inspiration Place podcast, an art world insider podcast for artists by an artist, where each week we go behind the scenes to uncover the perspiration and inspiration behind the art. And now, your host, Miriam Shulman. Well, hey there, passion maker. This is Miriam Shulman, your curator of inspiration. And you're listening to episode 192 of the Inspiration Place podcast. I am so grateful that you're here. Today's guest is very accomplished. Very, very accomplished. She even has a master's of fine arts from the Corcoran College of Arts and Design at George Washington University in Washington, D.C. And she also teaches art at the college level. Yet, She too has struggled in the past to call herself an artist. However, now she carves out time for herself every day to create, even while raising her four girls. It hasn't been easy during the last few years. Now, if calling yourself an artist or carving out time for your creativity has been your challenge as well, then you're going to want to check out my other podcast episodes that I've done on managing your mind. To help you sift through all the shows, I've curated a mindset playlist just for you. To get your hands on the mindset playlist, go to shulmanart.com forward slash playlist. By the way, we also curated two other playlists that you might want to check out. But for today, just look at shulmanart.com forward slash playlist and look for the mindset playlist. All right. And now on with the show, let's bring on today's guest. Today's guest is a printmaker and book artist. Her work has been exhibited in the U.S. and is part of the permanent collections of Yale's Manuscript Library, George Washington University's Gelman Library, University of Puget Sound, and Samford University. She's currently the Alma Thomas Fellow at the Studio Gallery in Washington, D.C., a YouTuber and designer for artfomies.com. Please welcome to the inspiration place, Sarah Matthews. (laughs) Thank you for having me. This is so exciting. I'm so glad you're here. So (laughs) the way I found you, Sarah, is that I was asked by Karen Abend. I'm saying her name right. Oh, my God. Abend. Yeah, Abend. Yeah. (laughs) I was asked to be part of her sketchbook school. And the first thing I did when she asked me is actually I said to her, I'm only going to participate if you have a diverse group of artists. And she actually did not disappoint. I am so <laughs> impressed by yes the diverse. I mean, she has artists from Israel, mm-hmm. Berlin, India. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm so impressed. Like, all over the world. All yes. over the world. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So I didn't invite everybody who's participating, by the way, but I was very interested in talking to you, Sarah. So that is how I found you, because I am a fellow sketchbook school artist. Revival. Thank you. Sketchbook revival. I gave the wrong name, (laughs) that too. I get everything wrong. I am the queen of malprotisms. (laughs) Really bad. It's okay. I call my kids the wrong name. I call my daughter, like my sister's name all the time. Yeah. My oldest daughter gets called Anna. She's my youngest sister. And then all the kids get called different. I have four daughters. So yeah, they all get mixed up and they always like, ma, that's not my name. And right. I'm, like, I'm always I'm, calling I'm my daughter, my sister's looking name. At you. Right. And she's like, do you I'm remind looking- me of your sister? I was like, well, yes. yes. <laughs> that's yes. why this is happening. <laughs> Hello. Right. <laughs> Obvious, obviously, especially when you act like that, you know. Right. Sounds familiar. Right. That's why I call you that. Okay. 
Okay, so you have four daughters. How old How old are they? What's the age range? 19, 13, 11, and five. Okay. I think the five-year-old is the one I saw on your Instagram. Yes. <laughs> so cute. She's like, she's my, uh, my hip buddy. She's always, well, she's not here right now because she's coming home from school, but she would normally be right here. Yeah. Well, sitting next to me. So. They, that never stops <laughs> happening, by the way. The 24-year-old no. doesn't even live here <laughs> and sometimes walks in through the door. <laughs> right. You're like, what? <laughs> what are you doing here? I thought you moved out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have to do some laundry. Right, exactly. Right. I'm just here right. to eat. <laughs> yeah, and it's not that I do her laundry, but she doesn't want to get the quarters or whatever, you know, whatever that is. So it's yeah, like easier to you. come home. Okay, yeah. so I was very excited by your Instagram visit that you did to the Baltimore Museum of Art with Latoya's... Latoya Hobbs. Oh Latoya my Hobbs. gosh. <gasps> yes. Oh my I God. Know. It's just like breathtaking. Um, Okay, let me just set the scene for our listeners who (laughs) don't know you and don't, I'm not as familiar with this artist that well either, but Sarah does carving in her work. So your art foamies is a, a very accessible way to do carving. And a lot of the work that you've done has been in carving. Yes. Latoya Hobbs, is that an artist that you had been familiar familiar with before? I had I had never heard of her. I'm not sure how well known she is. Oh yeah, she's very well known, but she's a part of the Black Women Printmakers or no Black Women of Print. Okay, there's like I think or six or seven of them. I think if you go to her Instagram page, you could see that she did this full like portfolio of all the the founders of the Black Women of Print. So she did like their portrait and they're, each one is stunning, stunning. But I met her through Big Ink Prints. Big Ink Prints um, is run by uh, Lyle and Corand, and they travel across the country helping people to print their large scale prints. So basically you get to do a call for entry, fill out the form, say what you're going to design. And they pick, you know, like 10 to 15 people to help them print their large block. So they bring and travel along with their etching press. It's called the big tuna. It's really big and they can run anything. I think the largest is like 36 inches or three feet by six feet because they have an extension. Like an, like you, when you get a table, you have an extension, they have an extension to the etching press so you can make it as long as you want, which is amazing. But I met her and her husband because they both carved a block and been following her ever since. And we're both colleagues at MICA, the Maryland Institute College of Art. She teaches drawing and I teach printmaking for artist books. Yes. So you teach teach at the college, at the college level. Is that right? Yes. Wow. You you are so impressive, by the way. I'm like (laughs) so impressed. How did you get your art in in Yale permanent collection? How'd that come about? So that was actually a piece that um, was a collaborative book work that I did before I graduated from the Corcoran College of Art and Design. So I think there was like eight of us in the class and we did this book called, uh, gosh, it just ran out of my head, Exquisite Future is what it was called. And it was called, and it, it called it that is because it was an exquisite course. So one person started the work they printed something and then they handed off to the next person and they took the inspiration from that print and made, printed something else. So it went from, it passed through eight hands. Same thing with the story. We made the story like somebody, I can't remember where, what year we started it at, but let's say it started at year 2000, then the next person will be year 2020 and the next person would be year 2040. And we would talk about how the bees, the, the extension of bees, how it affected that time period. And bees so we made as up a in story. the insect? Yes. Okay. Bees as, a, as the insect. Like, so like the declining of bees, how it affected what the future would, would hold. So that's, it was just a make-believe thing about bees, but we sold all of them. Like we, we finished them all. We were like the first graduating class to finish our books on time. And then we sold them all. And Yale was one of the schools that purchased it. 
That's incredible. And I think we need to back up a little bit because I don't think everyone listening knows what an art book is. So could you define what that is, <laughs> if that's possible? Because I'm sure there's multiple <laughs> definitions. So, you know, I, I'm i laughing because I spent literally a semester writing a paper on what an artist book was. I love and that. <laughs> it, was a, it was a whole like thing. We had to defend what an artist book is. And at the end of the day, I know it's really simple, but if you think about a painting, right, you see it, you don't have to describe it because you know it's a painting, right? So take that painting and put it on paper, right? And that person takes that painting that's on the paper and makes a book out of it. That is an artist book. <laughs> Same thing. If you wanted to print it, if you wanted to make it out of plastic, it doesn't matter. It's just a sculpture that tells a story that is made by an artist. And that's the simplest answer to the question. So let's, so let's be, I'm being facetious now. Okay, so what's the <laughs> difference between that and like an illustrated book? There's no words, but it could have words. So, yeah. right? That is an artist book. So if the artist says it's an artist book, it's an artist book. Right, okay, and, so it's, it's kind of like, what is art? It's the same kind of question. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You get to say it is. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and it, and I usually the books that I make are sculptural. So if you go to my site, um, maryruths.com, M-A-R-Y-R-U-T-H-S.com, there are examples of, of artist books. And I do that primarily because people always ask me, what is that? And I'm like, go to my website because I don't feel like explaining it. <laughs> okay. We're, we're going to put a pin in that Sarah Ruth, a Mary Ruth thing because I was very confused by that. I was not confused though when I went to your YouTube, which is Sarah B me as in B, me as in yes. B E, not as in the bug. Right. And not as in the letter, but B E M E, right. Sarah B me. If you go there, you'll get to see Sarah make art books with gel prints and her foam stamps. Mm -hmm. And it's basically yes. And it's different than art journaling, right? Or no? Or is this part of the thesis? No, it's all the same. It's all yeah, the yeah. same. It's like what we decide to call yeah. it, right? Okay. Correct. Okay. Yes. <laughs> all right. That makes sense to me. And you guys could, should just go check it out. It's very inspiring. Just you can sit there for a long time and with, you know, watch <laughs> yes. going from one YouTube video to the next. <laughs> I know. I actually, I don't know if you noticed, I actually stopped making YouTube videos around October-ish because I was preparing for my solo exhibitions. So I haven't made any in a long time. That's okay. I, they don't need to see I, something from now. I know. <laughs> I need to, I intend to make new ones, but they won't be for a while, FYI. But there are a hundred Yeah, there's videos plenty, to watch. there's plenty there for people who are just <laughs> discovering you for the first time. Yes. There's yes. plenty. <laughs> All right, let's go back to Mary Ruth. So I'm on your website. By the way, those of you who want to build a mailing list, people are always asking me how to do it. Sarah does a really good job. Her pop-up says exactly what I teach people to write in their little pop-up. It's not, here's a discount code, by the way. And you know, I'm not even going to tell you what it is. I want everyone to go. This is your homework. Go to sarahmatthews.com. And look at her pop up and see what it says, because it's really good. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. <laughs> but I did get confused, though, when I clicked and all of a sudden I'm on Mary Ruth. I don't understand who Mary Ruth is and what that site is. So explain that to me. Okay. So when you are learning to be a book artist, they always tell you to name your press. So it's like Dolphin Press. Right. You know, it's a book. Okay. okay. Yeah. So you name your press. Okay. So I named my press after my grandmother. Oh, wow. So, Tell us more. Which, yeah. So when I was in my 20s, my grandmother, well, gra my grandmother was a poet as long as I can remember, but she had an eighth grade education. But she, even the, despite that, she still wrote all of the time. She was a prolific writer. So she would send me her handwritten pages So because she, she doesn't, didn't use a computer or a typewriter or anything, but she would send me her handwritten pages when I, in my twenties. 
asking me to transcribe them so she could send it to the copyright office to get them, you know, certified. And so that's what I did. And I sent them off. They're all copyrighted. But we never got the chance to get her her poetry book published because she passed away. So when I was getting my degree in book arts, one of the classes I took was book layout. So our, guess what I'm going to say, our assignment was about memory. I believe that's what it was, about memory. And so I thought about and remembered all the poetry that my grandmother had given me. So I took that and created this poetry book based off all of her work. And that was the first book that I ever made. That's why I named my press Mary Roots. Okay. I love that. That makes a lot of sense now. And we we all have, I had a grandmother who used to write me letters with her beautiful long hand penmanship because she was from the Victorian era, you know, where they still (laughs) taught penmanship. They don't teach that anymore. No, they, do you, they did don't. you did you have penmanship when you were? Are you old enough to? I did too. Yes, I suffered. Yes, like I mean, they used to measure like your F's and the you know the S's, the the Z, making sure that it was the same. Yeah, we didn't. Have to eat. They, my kids don't know anything about that. All no. they know is how to just to write their name in cursive, and that's it. Right. I, I actually used to get <laughs> C's in handwriting because. I was very creative with my fonts in the third grade and I went to battle I, with my teacher. <laughs> I love doing the flourishes. And so I always got accused, like when we were supposed to write in print, yeah. like stop writing in cursive. I'm like, but I like the little curly cues. So why can't I just do that? <laughs> well, I would. So you remember the blue lined paper, right? That we used. Yes, okay. Yes. So, uh, and you were supposed to use like the, the thick line the two thick lines and I, and then yes. there's the dash line in the middle. So I would do these like small all caps. That was my favorite font. <laughs> of course, that was, <laughs> that got me C's because that was not following the directions <laughs> at all. Right. <laughs> but, but I do miss those times, man. I, I can't know, even, right? like, you look at my handwriting now. You're like, what is that? <laughs> 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 my teachers will be appalled at looking at my handwriting now. So yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> I was appalled looking at my kids. Like, what are they teaching you? What are we paying these high taxes for to live in this town? They're not even teaching you how to write. Well, they're using their laptops, especially with after the pandemic. Like, that's the thing now. They oh, just use right. their laptops. Right. Well, my kids are a little older. So, my, my kids asked me, what, what would you have done, mom, if um, we were in school during the, if we were young enough during the pandemic that you had to homeschool us? I was like, Oh no, honey, you would have had to miss a year. I would have checked out of that. So Sarah's giving me the look like she didn't check out. <laughs> Sarah's like, I, I was I, a good mom. I'm, I'm barely here. Okay. You know, but it was like, cause they were in the age where they had never really used a laptop per se. So like logging in, they didn't know how to log right. in. They didn't know how to send an email. They didn't know how to get on their Google meets. and. I was just like, literally like, <laughs> like, oh my God. <sighs> Sarah, I'm sure everyone wants to find out how they can learn from you. So if you go to sarahmatthews.com, what kind of art classes will they find there? Blog printing and bookmaking. That's what I do. <laughs> Sometimes depends on the class. I will do printmaking on paper and then show you how to bind the pages that you printed. Um, Sometimes it's just like, we're just learning how to use this, uh, do the structure. So it depends. Okay. So if you want to take any of her classes, go to sarahmatthews.com forward slash classes. Classes. And you will see what's there. And I'm just looking at my notes here. And I realized I did not ask you about your solo show Overcomer. And I really wanted to ask you about that. So Okay. Tell us about the title Overcomer, what that means to you. That is the title of your solo show, right? I got that. Yeah. Yes. The Overcomer really was a culmination of like all my feelings that were happening during the pandemic. I mean, we kind of laughed at it and discussed it earlier. Like I was really pulling my hair out, trying to figure out a way to do my work, considering my kids. Not only I had the two you know, one was like in elementary school, like I think fifth grade. And the other one was in middle school. 
And then my youngest was four at the time. So, you know, the four-year-old needs like constant tension. And then the other two were like, please help me log in. I don't know what I'm doing. What, why? My teacher says I'm supposed to be here at nine and she's not here. And I'm like, wait, <laughs> just like when you log in a Zoom today, it says <laughs> the, the host is not here yet. We will get to you in a few minutes. This is like, please just wait, please just wait. And so I had to like really abandoned the space I had downstairs in the basement because I had set aside to do my work. But every time I would go down there, someone would call me upstairs. So I tried to build a space up here in my living room. So I started making things at my dining room table at my kitchen island because I was like, I need to make things or I, it's like breathing. I need it because I can't live without making something. Because right before the pandemic, my classes were taking off. I was, my classes were filling up. I was doing classes in person. Things were going well. And then it was a halt. Like I thought, oh, next week we'll, we'll be out of this. But no. No, it we was, were all it was, naive. I, it was I thought like, it'd be over in three months. I don't know what. Oh, no. It's still happening, right? Technically, right? it's still happening, it is. right? And it so. Is. I just was like, I don't know what I'm going to do because I felt like I was dying inside. I don't mm. have to say that. I mean, that's what it felt like. So I would wake up early in the morning. And at first I'm like, oh, I've got one hour to get up. Let me try and crank this out. And then that would, I, that would defeat me because I couldn't crank it out in an hour. Somebody mm. will get up early or somebody needed something, somebody bumped her head or whatever. And I had to just go and suck it up and miss out on the thing. So then I had to like break it up in pieces. Oh, today I'm going to pick the paper tomorrow. I'm going to pick the pinks. I mean, like breaking it up to small increments. And I was like determined because I'm like, I really want a solo exhibition. Like that, that is, was my complete dream. Like I really want this thing. So I like, since I'm home, I'm going to hunker down and yeah, the kids have their homeschool. But I'm going to do this. And I had no solo shows lined up. It's not like someone said, hey, Sarah, we're, we want you at so-and-so's gallery. Like no one. I had applied, applied, applied and got turned down multiple times, said no. <laughs> but I'm like, I'm still going to make this stuff. And you know how they say, you know, you, you build it. If you build it, they will come. That's exactly what I did. I just started making things. But then you built your own opportunity, right? Like, tell yes, us about exactly. that. Just keep keep talking. Because I had done one large scale print for Amory Sculpture Garden for a previous show, they loved it and thought about me for their MLK Day celebration. So it was three days where I would show the community how to make their own posters. So not necessarily carving stamps, but I showed them how to make stamps out of foam because it's going to be kids and families there. So it need to be easy for them to be able to navigate that printmaking space. So they asked me to come and they're like, as a result of this, you know, community project, we would like to do a solo exhibition for you. And I was like, yes, finally. And the thing is, everything was already made. So I just, <laughs> just some of the things I framed my own self with my own hands, <laughs> And drove all the way to Amory Sculpture Garden, which is almost two hours one way, and helped hang my work. And it was 30 something pieces that I put in that. And then I had another solo exhibition in the Un University of Indianapolis that, that had like 16 pieces. So, what is that? 38 plus 16 is what? <laughs> 40. Uh, no, 54. Yeah. So, some of that stuff I did make when I was in school and some of that stuff I made like pre-pandemic, but most of it was at my kitchen table in my living room. Wow. You really manifested <laughs> your own opportunity though. You kept saying to the yeah. universe, this is going to happen and putting one foot in front of the other. Yep. Yeah. It was God. Cause I don't know. I don't know if I was going to make it like mentally but I'm glad I did. I came out on the other side. And now it's like, after the show is over, you bring home all the stuff. You're like, okay, so what am I supposed to do with it now? <laughs> 
do you, you Not sell have all this stuff? Do you sell it too? Yeah, I well, one piece was sold, but I have to ca- now I have to catalog it and and get it up, get it you know start farming it out to people. But that's mm-hmm. the next step. That's the that's the behind the scenes thing that artists have to do to market themselves to get things sold because just just because you do a sole exhibition doesn't mean everybody's going to buy everything. There's still more work to do. Yeah. So. And there's seasons of our creativity. Like there's a season where we create, there's a season where we show, there's a season when we sell and you don't have to do all those at one time. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And that's okay. Yeah. But I got my, I got my dream, right? So yeah. now it's time, it's time to make a new dream, right? That's right. And can't wait to find out what future Sarah does. <laughs> It's a future Sarah problem. <laughs> yes. All right. Okay. So don't forget, you can check out Sarah's work and her books and her YouTube channel. You can find all those links in the show notes, shulmanart.com forward slash 192. And don't forget, if you like this episode, then you'll have to check out my free mindset playlist. We've curated the podcast episodes that focus on managing your mind. So if you liked what we talked about today, you're going to love that too. So go to shulmanart.com forward slash playlist. And if you want to get the list of the art supplies that I use in my own art journal practice, you can go to shulmanart.com forward slash journal. We will make sure we have links to all these things in the show notes, which you can find at shulmanart.com forward slash 192. By the way, if you are an art journal enthusiast, you want to make sure you don't miss out on the next two episodes coming up. Next week, I'm talking to Ray Cafe Hadar on how she developed a certification program to train art teachers in her own art journal method, and she calls it visual journaling. And the week after that, I'm speaking with Abby C., who's coming out with a book on the art of the travel journal. Believe me, you're not going to want to miss that episode either. So to prevent FOMO, make sure you hit the follow, subscribe, or the plus sign in your podcast app. So the plus sign is the one to look for if you're on Apple Podcasts or on or on iTunes. I don't know why they made it so hard. It used to be a big old purple subscribe button, and now it's a teeny tiny little plus sign. You'll find it in the upper right-hand corner. Make sure you hit that plus sign so you don't miss a thing. All righty, Sarah, do you have any last words for my listeners before we call this podcast complete? Yeah, I have one little thing. So after I graduated from getting my MA in art, I literally walked across the stage and then gave birth two months later to my youngest daughter. And for an entire year, I made nothing. I mean, literally nothing. And then I would wake up every day thinking that I was a failure because I didn't make anything. So one day I received a call for entry from big ink prints. And so I submit, submitted my information and my design and I hadn't carved anything for an entire year. And here is me submitting an application to carve two feet by four feet. <laughs> but I did, cause I'm like, I need to rip the bandaid off. And yeah, I just, I have a young baby, but I really need to do something. And so I submitted it and then they sent me the confirmation that I was accepted. And then I waited to the last minute to carve my, my whip block the night before. I think I was carving right up until they said, Sarah, it's your turn. <laughs> I love that. And this was the piece that ended up in Yale, the collaborative piece? No, this is the piece that ended up in the Amory Sculpture Garden solo exhibition. It's Excellent. called Sarah's, Sarah's Mud Cloth. Beautiful. And when, because it's a community print, because all of us are working together to print each other's wood block. Yeah. And when it came off the press and, you know, we're all holding the page because it's really long, holding the page up. And I look as it's being hung and I'm looking up at it. I'm like, oh, I'm an artist. And it wasn't to that point where I could say to myself, I'm finally an artist. I finally did it. 
And that's when I started really making things consistently every day. And so what I would tell everyone on this call, if you have something that you really love to do, I mean, on this podcast, why did I say call? Because we're on a Zoom call. Because <laughs> you, you think you're just talking to me because I made you so comfortable. Exactly. Uh, everybody with my bad on jokes. this podcast, listen to this podcast, you know, so if there's something that you really want to do, just go out and do it. Because one thing I've learned, especially during this pandemic, people are losing their lives and we should be able to live our life to the fullest each and every day. So go out and do it. Keep making things. No matter what it is that you have on desire on your heart that you want to do, just do it. Don't hold back. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of making mistakes because that's all a part of, that's the whole part of learning about yourself. Because I've seen so many people in the past who would say to me, I don't want to buy such and such, or I don't want to do because I'm afraid I'll make a mistake. Well, that's the whole point. <laughs> You got to make mistakes in order to learn so you can move forward and do more things. So keep making. Yes. And also we can learn from Sarah if, if it's been a while, because for some of us, it has been hard to create during this time. Our creative mm-hmm. inspirations have dried up. Forgive yourself for that. Yeah. Give yourself some grace. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay, this is um, a good place to stop. No, 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 it's, it's good emotions. Um, <laughs> I like to feel my feelings. That's All right. right. <laughs> yeah, it makes me feel more human. Thank you so much for being with me here today. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. It was a great conversation. And we got to laugh and cackle a little bit too. Yeah, I'll make sure my editor, uh, you'll take care of those offensive things. <laughs> my listener <laughs> will never know my bad jokes, we hope. Some of them may slip through, though. Wait, wait a minute. How old are you? There's a Zoom filter, my friend. I have a Zoom filter on. I'm 53. No, you're not. (laughs) Sarah just like looked really close. I can turn the Zoom filter (laughs) off so you can see everything. Turn it off. I want to (laughs) see. I I do not believe you. Cannot be. I I would have said you were 30 something. What are you talking about? Oh my gosh, I love you. No, I was, there's a, did you know about the, um, touch up my appearance filter on zoom? No. What is this? Come on. <laughs> okay. What? Okay. All right. You go down to your video setting and you click uh-huh. on right next to the video. It says, um, actually, no, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. So you see where it says video settings, click video oh, settings my gosh. and click. I'm doing I'm look, doing you it. look 10 years younger too. And click I'm doing it. You click touch up my appearance and then you yes. see the slider bar. Yeah, I all did it. I the way all to in. the right. <laughs> I have to go all the way over here. Okay. And now if you really, if you really want to um do do it right, also click the adjust for low light. The checkbox right. right under Chuck it. <laughs> It's awesome, right? Put me off forever. That's okay, it. Okay, we got to do like a little. Um, I'm gonna do a print screen. <laughs> All right. Now, is there anything else you want to say with this new facelift <laughs> that you just got? It's like I know. I don't like looking at myself now unless I'm on Zoom. It's like, like if somebody invites I'm, me with I'm, Microsoft Teams or Skype, I'm like, no. <laughs> Okay, everyone, thank you so much for being with me here today. We'll see you the same time, same place next week. Stay inspired. Thank you for listening to the Inspiration Place podcast. Connect with us on Facebook at facebook.com slash shulmanart, on Instagram at shulmanart, and of course, on shulmanart.com.